We're rolling. I guess. Something. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Gatsby. Uh, presumably all know. Um, so my name's Kyle Matthews, and I'm the founder of the project. Uh, you can follow me and the Gatsby account on Twitter. And uh, yeah, so Gatsby's goal is to help people build blazing fast modern apps and websites with React. And uh, it's gotten a little bit, ooh, okay. Hello. Okay. Hey, I'll just, here, I'll just hold it until I'm typing, because then this is a lot easier this way. Okay, so uh, yeah, the project's about three and a half years old, and it's grown pretty well since then. Uh, we're up to 27,000 GitHub stars, 650,000 downloads a month, um, and 1281 contributors. Uh, and I don't know if any of you heard about Hacked Hacktoberfest. But it's a pretty cool initiative that a few different companies run. But anyways, we got a ton of contributors in the last month from that, which has been really fun. Slash slightly exhausting. <laughs> um, lots of PRs. So uh, yeah, a lot of sites use uh, Gatsby now. Um, the React uh, homepage and docs are built with it. Um, my tech background is actually uh, came from Drupal back in the day, kind of college, post-college. Uh, and then I worked at Pantheon uh, here locally. Um, early part of this decade. And uh, then when I left Pantheon, I started uh, using React. And React was about six months old at the time. And I just completely fell in love. Like it was kind of the best UI thing I'd ever used. And I uh, started working on a startup with a friend and we were building you know, the web app with React. And it was great, it was fantastic. And I said, I don't ever want to use anything else ever again. Like it was just like that big of a leap forward. And Gatsby came about uh, kind of early 2015 because our startup, you know, we, we figured out what we wanted to do and we we're like, hey, let's build a website so we can tell people about what we're doing. And I was looking around like, okay, how are we going to build this website? And I just wanted something simple and easy and definitely needed to use React. And at the time, there wasn't any kind of, you know, tool for using website to build, you know, tools for using React to build a website. So I decided to build it, and I built it, built a website, I can move my blog over, and it was cool. And then I open sourced it. Um, and the basic idea of Gatsby then and, and now is that you take React, you know, which is a JavaScript framework, and then you server render that to static HTML. Um, and, and React was like pretty novel at the time being able to do that, and a lot of other frameworks, JavaScript frameworks, have copied it since then. But the idea is you can take a React app and then go through each page and like create like an HTML representation of that. Um, and then you deploy that uh, to like a CDN, and that means that you know your 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 React app it loads super fast because it's just HTML. There's no JavaScript needs to render in the client in order to for it to work. Uh, but then uh, Gatsby then takes care of also loading in the JavaScript that's necessary for that page, and it hydrates you know the static HTML into a React app. Uh, and yeah, so every Gatsby site is basically a super fast loading React app. Um, and it was cool because um, I really liked it because you kind of had the best of both kind of app and website kind of paradigms. Uh, you had easy way of building out these pages and like with uh, templates and et cetera, et cetera. But also whenever I needed to add any sort of interactive stuff like forms, et cetera, et cetera, it was all very easy to do because you know, you're in React the whole time. You're building a React app the whole time. So you have all the site stuff that you need, but then when you need to add on appy-like stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, universal JavaScript, if you've heard that term. Um, yeah, and it's nice because you could write all your templates in one format, uh, React. Yeah, so initial release, 2015. Um, and at the time, React was very similar to, or not React, but Gatsby was very similar to uh, other static site generators, um, like Jekyll, Hugo, Hexo, uh, if you've used any of those. Uh, but of course, it was using React instead of like liquid templates or whatever. Um, yeah, so I rebuilt my blog company website and it was really fantastic developer experience because it was React, and the site performance was super nice. Um, but you know, when you open source something, uh, an unfortunate, well, maybe not unfortunate. Anyways, a side effect. It's uh, whatever it is. People start using it oftentimes, and then they like have bugs, and then you fix the bugs, and they want new things, and on and on and on. Um, which was like awesome, and exciting, but also I had a startup that I was trying to do, so. It was a little bit of a bit, you know, a bit much to manage uh, doing startup founder by day and open source issue responder by night, I guess. Um, 
And it was interesting because a lot of requests kind of fell into some, you know, patterns. Uh, a lot of people were trying to figure out how to use Gatsby with different CMSs. Uh, a lot of people were like, hey, what about themes? You know, what about code and data splitting so that Gatsby could handle larger sites? Um, what I gradually realized is that people wanted to use Gatsby as a presentation layer for their CMS. So it wasn't just like kind of static site generator, you know, you have your markdown files that, you know, you know, the engineer uses to build their blog or something, but it's kind of like a full-blown, you know, CMS replacement, which got me really excited because, you know, I had done a lot of Drupal stuff and I worked at Pantheon, so I, I understood really well, like, kind of the needs of this audience, you know, it's like when you're, you know, have these sophisticated uh, sites that you're building with, you know, complex data models, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, potentially maybe Gatsby could, you know, solve those kind of problems, but also use kind of modern node front-end uh, uh, engineering practices. So, um, yeah, so I started thinking more about the problem, and I looked at, you know, the traditional kind of monolith CMS, uh, like pretty much all CMSs are, they have basically two, two layers. There's a presentation layer and then the content backend, the content screens, content modeling, databases, and all that good stuff. And uh, decoupled CMS is well, obviously there's a gap now. So you have your CMS and it's headless, and you have an API that you access things through, and then you have a presentation layer that you, you actually are building out the site with. And so the question was, okay, like Gatsby is, has a great developer experience, has produces really fast sites, but how do you like connect, you know, Gatsby, your React components, to you know your data? Like, how do you glue those things together um, in a way that doesn't suck? Um, and so uh, I thought about this problem for a long time, and eventually the solution I came up with is source plugins and GraphQL. And so now the gap has this kind of build time GraphQL layer that bridges that gap so that, uh, you know, yeah, which I'll get into, I'll show an example a little bit. So yeah, so that's, that's so this was like kind of, later 2016 that I started thinking really seriously about this. Um, and actually my startup at the time, it failed. So after that failed, I decided to go full time and build out these things. And yeah, and so the resulting, uh, the resulting kind of experience looks like this, where at the top you have a pretty normal React component if you've done React. And then, but below, you have a GraphQL query that you can just query the data you want for that page, and then it'll just, at build time, it'll get written out and be available to you um, in the client. Uh, yeah, and so the source plugin idea that bridges the gap between the you know, presentation layer and the content backend uh, has proved quite popular. Um, there are now probably 100 plus different source plugins for you know, any, any number of different uh, data sources. Um, so the total, like, yeah, so, so counting source plugins and other plugins, there's now 510 different plugins. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that was uh, 2017. Um, yeah, and since then, the uh, community's been growing really strong. Uh, GitHub stargazers keep going up. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we have over 1,000 contributors now, uh, 85 PRs a week. Uh, so this is some tweets people talk about Gatsby with. Uh, I made this website with Gatsby JS. I'm totally in love with it. React stacks and joiners of the future. Uh, really loving Gatsby JS tutorials and documentation. Seems like the perfect balance of depth in getting started quickly. Uh, my word, Gatsby JS is impressive. The sort of thing that sounds so well. You want to make up reasons to use it. However, preposterous. Which is a great word. And then uh, somebody commented on somebody else's site. <laughs> Yeah, it's really fun too. A lot of people use uh, Lighthouse um, to measure their Gatsby site speed, and it's pretty much perfect scores across the board without any, you know, kind of optimization at all. Uh, Gatsby puts, you know, Gatsby tries to take care of basically site performance for you. Um, yeah, and in the last, you know, few years, we've just seen a lot of really nice uh, modern sites, apps being built with Gatsby. Uh, people use it for docs, apps, blogs, marketing sites, e-commerce. Uh, some different examples, um, Mike Johnson for Colorado, ran for governor. Uh, Figma.com, they released this designsystems.com. Uh, it's kind of a little interactive little booklet, web booklet thing. Uh, 
Just Do It campaign for Nike uh, just relaunched on Gatsby. Um, HDB is kind of a database startup. Uh, Rach.io is an e-commerce store. Uh, Code Sandbox, it's a, it's a tool. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, stitchfix.com. Uh, also, uh, so Gatsby was growing super fast and I could see that, yeah, so last year, yeah, after V1 was launched, Gatsby was just growing super fast and it was pretty overwhelming to like try to keep up with it. I was just doing like contract consulting around Gatsby to pay the bills and I was like, okay, this is definitely not sustainable and there's a much larger opportunity than just me by myself trying to keep up with this. Um, and so uh, me and my best friend Sam, we decided to start a company and raise money and uh, now we're a company, which is great as, yeah. Okay, so, um, so actually question, uh, how many people went to the earlier talks on Gatsby? Okay, so about half. I was just wondering, yeah, how much kind of introduction is necessary. If, if people are getting bored and just wanna ask questions, you know, they already know stuff, that'd be cool too. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a little live demo stuff. Um, so you might be wondering, how do you use Gatsby? So this is Gatsby's website here. This is really sensitive. Okay, so this is Gatsby's website here. And um, yeah, so you click get started. And there's this uh, basic instruction. So Gatsby's built on Node, so you need to have Node installed. I need to have gets installed, and then you can run this command and it'll set up kind of like a basic uh, Gatsby site you can start playing with. And so I can uh, already have that running here, or installed here, so. Yeah, so. Once you have the, a Gatsby site installed, you just type Gatsby develop, and then it starts up a development server. And you have localhost 8000, you know, you have site, it's pretty cool. And, uh, and then you can just type, you know, you, so there's this uh, pages directory. So how Gatsby works basically is you have a pages directory and if you add a React component there, it becomes a page. So we go there, you know, we have this React component that corresponds to the home page here. So if I edit something like hi bad camp, you know, live updates, go back, oh, faster than I can tap. Uh, and then uh, you know there's another page, page two. If you go to page two. You know, say hi from the second page, folks, etc. Uh, so Gatsby has a link component. So this is all React again. So uh, we have our own link component, which kind of corresponds to the normal A element, but it adds cool things like you know everything is you know client rendered. So like page transitions are nearly instantaneous. Um, it also does uh, like prefetching. So if you link to another page, Gatsby will start prefetching the code and data that's needed for that page. So even on a very large site, you know, like Gatsby, you know, you click around and, um, you know, things are, you know, it feels like an app basically, because it is an app. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, yeah, so if we like add another link here, go to another page, page three, so if we go there, then it's like, okay, there's not a page yet. Um, it says, but you can create a React.js component in your site directory at source pages page three dot js. So if we just copy this and do page three dot js. Um, and then, yeah, then it just kind of goes. Anyways. So it can scaffolding out a new site is very quickly. You can add new pages, you can like edit things. Everything feels like you have kind of like a direct connection between your code and you know what's happening on screen, um, which is essential you know for for moving quickly. And then, okay, so let's jump over to 
a different starter. Okay, so actually, so just to back up a little bit, um, when yeah, when you type Gatsby new, uh, by default you're just using this this Gatsby starter default. Uh, but we also have a whole bunch of other starters that you can use as like kind of the basis of your site. And some of these are kind of like use case focused. So if you're like building a blog, you're building a doc site or whatever, they kind of like have everything set up for you. But others are more like technology driven. So you're like, I really like TypeScript or I really like SAS or whatever. Um, you know, things that you, know, you don't necessarily get out of the box. Uh, you can you know, pick one of these starters to kind of see how those things are put together. Uh, so anyway, so, so we'll also try out this uh, starter blog thing. Um, images cover something. So if we run this, same thing, Gatsby develop. And so this blog is like a markdown blog. Uh, and so as part of this, we'll show off some GraphQL. Uh, so if we refresh this, yeah. So now you can see here, uh, we have a blog, we have the title, um, and several blog posts. We click to it, you know, see the full blog post, et cetera. Um, so some interesting parts about this. So when you're building a site, you can have like the site metadata section, and you can use this. And so, so a site can, like a starter can, like pull information uh, from here. So, for example, it says the title is Gatsby Starter Blog. Uh, if we want to do Gatsby Awesome Starter Blog, then it should refresh. Actually, it might not be pulling from there. Okay, I take that back because I think that's hard coded there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, that ruined my demo. I forgot that. Anyway, so it's actually hard coded in this component. Anyhow, but um. Okay, so if we open up one of the Markdown files. Yeah, so we have this hello world post. Uh, and if you're familiar with Markdown, this should look familiar. Uh, so we can change the title. We can say hello, bad camp. Oh, that's. Oh, whoops. How did that go there? Okay, that makes a lot more sense. This is somehow. Okay, so we do hi, hello, bad camp. Um, and like it auto updates that. Uh, you know, we can edit text. This is fun, etc. Like that. Um, we can also like change dates. So if you notice, the date here is in ISO 8601, but here it's formatted. So if we change, you know, uh, the year to 2016, uh, it actually so it updates it here, but also you notice it changed the order. So it's kind of like live refreshing. Oh, sorry, in the back. Can you change the in color from the source to the Oh, the editor theme card? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, dark, contrasty. Actually, I'm not going to change this anywhere else. So then, dark color scheme. Yeah. Let's we'll see if this one works. Yeah, sorry, I don't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't changed it. Yeah. Okay. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay. Yeah, so let's look at the index.js accounts here. So this is, uh, this is again, the, the front page React component that's driving this page. And this is more complicated than the last one, obviously, as there's more going on here. Um, and what's especially interesting about this one, though, is the GraphQL query here at the bottom, which is what's powering, 
you know, the data fetching for this page. And so uh, there's, there's a few parts here. So first there's this all markdown remark thing. And this is what, so basically it's saying query all the markdown files and then it's sorting by date and it's ordering in descending order. Um, and you know, it's picking off different fields here. And so, as I said earlier, you know, as you noticed earlier, in the markdown file, uh, the date is an ISO 8601, but here it's formatted. And so we can like change the formatting here, for example, to be like that. And then, we'll, oh, that was weird, didn't save. Okay, anyway, so now that's saved, yeah, then it re re reruns the query with the new stuff like that. Um, so what's really cool about this is that it gives you a lot of flexibility in kind of picking out data from uh, and, and sorting and transforming it any way you want. Uh, so in a similar way, if, so this is, uh, yeah, so, so earlier we were talking about source plugins. And this is using Gatsby source file system. So it's a way of kind of like using your file system as your kind of backend. Um, but if you're using like a different system like uh, Drupal or Contentful or WordPress, you know, you install a different one like that. Um, but what's cool is that, you know, regardless of what your backend is, with Gatsby, you know, GraphQL for fetching the data and React for, you know, creating your site is consistent across these. Uh, so let's jump actually to the using Drupal example site. So this, uh, this is a Gatsby site that's hooking up to a Drupal backend. And hopefully the internet's good enough to pull down stuff. And so right now it's, it's going to the Drupal site and fetching down the content. Um, and then once it's started, uh, we'll... Uh, yeah, actually I'm not sure how fast this, how long this will take. Um, here. Yeah, it seems like Wi-Fi. It's not working so well. Okay, scratch that. That's gonna take forever. Um, cool. Let's jump back to the slides. So, actually, questions first about the demo. Anything I showed there? Yeah, over there. How does it change your process or approach to building sites? Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, it's a large, I mean, I guess it kind of depends, probably. Yeah, so the question is like, how is building with this different than when I would do stuff with Drupal? Um, yeah, I think what's different is React enables a kind of a more UI-centric flow where it's really easy to prototype a lot of the stuff you're doing. Like it's really easy to like mock up data and move quickly on kind of the React side of things, the front end side of things. Um, so I don't know, uh, but generally speaking, things can be quite similar. Uh, you know, it's really, I mean, the CMS is like, you know, it's, it's your presentation layer and your backend. So whether it's Twig or whether it's, you know, Gatsby, it's, you know, at the end of the day, you're generating like HTML. So, um, yeah, a lot of your processes should stay the same between the two. Yeah, other questions? Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Like, like Gatsby using Drupal data? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, the site I was trying to run, uh, that actually you guys can run at home if you'd like. Oh, and so the question was just to show some code that's interfacing with, with uh, Drupal. Uh, 
So there's this uh, using Drupal example site. And actually, I can show it up too, uh, the live version. Uh, yeah, so it's a recipe website. And I'm going to click around. Uh, and it has this recipe page, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, okay, so if you click into the code, it has, well, actually, first it has this Gatsby config where it has your different plugins. And so it's using Gatsby source Drupal and hooking up to, uh, this is from Contenta CMS, if any of you played with that. And then source pages. And then there's two, there's two kind of like standalone pages. There's the front page and then the recipes pages. And then each of these is a template page. So pages has the index and recipes. And then we go to source templates. Then, you know, there's one recipe component for each recipe page. Um, and then, uh, so like this recipe, this recipe page, for example, it is querying like the category, the title, preparation time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you go down to the GraphQL query, uh, which GitHub is destroying, let me change it to raw. Okay, so if you go down to the GraphQL query, uh, it's, it, it's querying recipes, and then, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's too far. Yeah, so if you look down here, it has it's querying recipes, and then it's uh, selecting the recipe by the slug, uh, and then it's grabbing title, preparation time, et cetera, et cetera, a bunch of stuff like there. And then it's using relationships to jump, get the image for the recipe, um, and uh, jumping down through this. And then actually here, it's, uh, so Gatsby has built-in capability of transforming images. And so that's what you can see here. So it's like, when you like go to a site, it does this blurb effect. So it can do some pretty complex responsive image transformation. Um, so if you look at this, it's, it's creating all these different uh, thumbnails. And so that's what uh, this fluid uh, query does here. And then up here, it's, you know, React component and um, has some uh, CSS and JS and it has like the title here, it has the category. Uh, and then, you know, it's using Flexbox for the image and then the preparation time, etc. And then down here it has like the ingredients and, and recipe and so forth. Uh, and then like another page, if we look at the index page, So yeah, the index page is, is similar that um, down here, well, it's, it's actually more complicated, I guess. But anyways, it has, uh, you know, we have this like top recipe thing. So we have multiple, so we have multiple queries. We have this top recipe, then we have these two here, and then we have these four down here. And so we have top recipe, which like limits to one, so it grabs the first, the latest uh, recipe in this case, the next two, um, and then the next four. And then each of these is querying like a different size image. So this one's 240 by 240. This one's 740 by 555. 475 is 475. And then all that data gets injected into the React component. Um, and then renders that out. Cool. Other questions? Was that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, right here. So there's a data set in terms of one big JSON file. Sorry, can you speak a little louder? Does the data set get uh, saved as like one big JSON file from, from the Drupal site? Is that how it works? Or does it actually query a live running Drupal site? Yeah, so it, it, it queries, it's using JSON API to, so the question was, does does Gatsby generate one large JSON file or? Uh, the plugin for the Drupal. Yeah, so, it's, so, so, the, so the question was like, how does basically Gatsby get data from Drupal? And it's using the JSON API to just pull down all the data. And then Gatsby stores it in a kind of a in-memory database of sorts. And then each, each page, when it has a query, that gets run. And the result of the query gets output as a, as a JSON file that's associated with each page. So 
when, if you look at the network tab here, uh, so if we refresh this, uh, and then as we go down here, it's like, it's lazy loading in data for these, these different pages. And then this, for example, is, uh, so this is a JSON file, for example, and it's associated with one of the pages here. And so when you click on it, both the data and the code are already prefetched, and so that's why it's like renders instantaneously. The nice thing though, it's like you have a massive site and you, know, you can have like tens of thousands of pages, but even if you go into one you know, section of it, you're not downloading the entire site, you know, all the data and all the code from the entire site. You're just downloading exactly what's necessary for that page, and then it starts prefetching what's necessary for those pages around it. And so as you know, user goes through the site, it's just kind of gradually pulling in what's necessary to render like, the next step, which is like kind of a keep a balance between you know, making sure that client-side performance is super fast, but not also you know, overloading uh, the network pipe by downloading too much or you know, overloading the memory on lower end devices, you know, that sort of thing. Does GraphQL like cache or store that data anywhere, or does it just turn around and you request a JSON API? Um, yeah. So, so the question is, does GraphQL store the data, or does it relay requests back to JSON API? So with the JSON API, it's it's kind of hard to directly convert the information into GraphQL. So what we do is we kind of download it all, like we download the entire site's data, and then kind of re rejigger it a bit locally. Um, so that it works better with Gatsby. Um, yeah, so then the requests are just running against this, this in-memory database that Gatsby creates, uh, which obviously doesn't scale very far. Uh, you know, if you go past like 10,000 nodes or whatever, you know, it's gonna just start taking a while. And so we actually have, uh, we added support a few months ago for like native GraphQL stitching, which means that with the Drupal GraphQL module, um, we can just natively pull that in and you can just, you know, send requests directly to it. Uh, there is some downside still to that approach, namely that uh, uh, we can't do some of the, like the data transformations that we can do um, currently. Uh, so we can't do like markdown to HTML or do the image transformations. But we're working on a way to basically, you know, you can have a remote GraphQL schema, but still run transformations on stuff. So like if you did transformation on image, we would just pull it down and do the you know thumbnail creation stuff locally. So, uh, anyways, yeah. So there's, there's there's a lot of active work in that area. Uh, other questions? Yeah. So, sorry, can you speak up? I can't quite hear you. How does this interact with access controls? So if you want to use it as a restriction to the public Yeah, so the question was, how does this interact with access control? And uh, basically Gatsby, so Gatsby creates a React app. Uh, and so you can do anything you'd normally do in a JavaScript app, including you know, have logged in only areas. Uh, but that's kind of on you. So if you want to do that, you, know, you have to implement it using some sort of authentication service, like Auth0 is a super common one. There's other ones you can do. Uh, but yeah, so generally, generally you should think of Gatsby as you, you there's like the public stuff that, you know, so Gatsby can be, have like public sections and then kind of logged in, you know, restricted access app sections. And so anything in the public section is public um, and should be restricted to, you know, anything you're okay if everyone's seen. And then, you know, the non parts, the public parts are like beyond the login. So an example of that is, a lot, and a lot of people use this pattern. So like Meet Fabric, for example, they're a life insurance startup and they're using Gatsby for their website and like this is just you know all kind of public marketing materials, uh, but you know you go into this get a quote section, and then uh, at some point in this process you create a login, and then you'll get dropped into like a dashboard where you can see like the result of you know your uh, application and so forth. Um, and that part is you know restricted and like you have to hit an API and so forth to do that. So with Drupal. Um, I'm not, I mean, yeah, I haven't actually talked to anyone who's done this, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it in theory. But you could have, you know, static parts of a Drupal site, but then you could have like a use Drupal login, and then 
uh, and then have that. And so anyway, so then once they're in that part of the site, they could just be hitting the Drupal API directly to kind of pull in different things. Uh, okay, other questions? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Oh, auth zero. Oh, it's uh, it, it, so this is a SaaS company, and yeah, so they they just they they do uh, authentication as a service. Um, they're super nice. We're like using it. We use it for our Gatsby store. Uh, so I click here. Well, I mean, here's a good example of this. So if I click here, so this is you if you want to buy a Gatsby swag, Gatsby shirts, uh, but if you log in with GitHub. You're taken to this login screen. You click login with GitHub, and then you know presto, you're logged in. But this whole thing is Gatsby. But once you log in, it's now like a React app part, and like it's making authenticated requests for you to uh, our API. And we're also GatsbyJS.com. We're in process of building out some cloud services, and. Uh, they're, they're not live yet. But anyways, but once they're live, we'll have like a little login button up here, and it'll be the same kind of flow uh, to get in. So, yeah, over here. So the, uh, the Drupal bridge, does it have, uh, is there a RD support in it for uh, offline mode for the, for the Drupal site? So basically, uh, images and, and data could all just be burned and accessed in a static way? or that you have to yeah, yeah. So he, so uh, the question was, can Gatsby be set up to do offline sites, basically? Uh, and the answer is, yeah. So there's a Gatsby plugin offline, which you add it, and it has a, anyways, it has a service worker configured to do offline stuff. Um, yeah, so it's actually really easy to use. You just add it to your plugins array, and then it, it it's. It works for most sites. So, a lot of sites are using it. Any questions? Cool. Okay, and uh, I think, I think I'm done at 2.15, which is now. So, cool, no more questions. Um, yeah, I encourage you to try out Gatsby, and I'll be here most of the rest of the day, just over in the booth in the section, so I'd love to talk to you more if you have questions, and thank you for coming.